navigating Games Workshop, asking yourself, what is the fair price of a model? And what's prompting this question was I, I was continuing to work on some of my chain of command historical armies with a friend, and they were looking at some of the other miniatures that I have in my collection as I was kind of switching around gaming cases and seeing some of my 40K stuff. And, and they're aware of 40K. They, they know 40K. But being primarily a historical war gamer, they're used to not only scale, because certainly the scale is different, but they're like, look, I can get my entire army for $90. Or if I'm playing DBA, DBN, you know, $30, $20. I'm just utilizing that aspect. The focus, uh, the miniatures are important in historical war gaming because we are trying to create that narrative. Um, but the focus is the rules. And you are detached from any one miniature company. What I mean by that is if you're playing chain of command, it's a set scale. You generally want to agree on the scale. And then you go out and you can use any type of miniatures that you want. Likewise, exploring other gaming systems, um, DBA, DBN, there's a lot that you can play. It's the scale and it's the number of elements in the game. You know, five figures represents one element and this is the size of the block and you're playing from that perspective. So it's very, very curious. Then, of course, you jump to Games Workshop and you're looking and saying, okay, the scale is set. The narrative is very unique and, and certainly it is compelling. You're not really substituting other models for Games Workshop, although you could make modifications and, and customize. So you're locked in to their system. You're locked into using their models and only their models. But that's that's the business of Games Workshop. That's the narrative and the communication of it. A parallel would be if I'm playing X-Wing miniatures, um, that's a very specific miniature, a specific model. I'm going to be buying those miniatures because we're playing in the Star Wars universe. You want to play in the Grim Dark 40K universe, you're going to be playing with those models. But again, there is some room for customization. We're putting 3D printing aside for a second. That's we're just putting that that aside for a moment. This idea of what is a fair price. You look at the prices for the models and you're like they're just insane. Some of the um friends that I have board gaming friends that are used to, at this point, paying for premium Kickstarters, where it's like, okay, I want the core. Oh, core is only $90. Hey, that's pretty good. But really, the core is just crippleware of this board game, um, and I need to buy the expansion pack. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get the character pack too. But then we've got season one, season two, season three, season four, and we've got the spinoff game. And next thing you know, you know you've got hundreds and hundreds of miniatures, and, and you're in for like, Five hundred, six hundred dollars. So I have numerous board gaming friends that, in a good way, they're kind of caught up in that insanity. They're used to dropping maximum coin on something on little plastic figures, but they look at at Games Workshop and they're like, "This Warhammer thing is nuts. Is absolutely nuts for the pricing." But then they look and say, "Well, okay, it's kind of out of control, but the um, appreciating." figures, appreciating the sculpt of it, appreciating what you can do. They're beautiful miniatures. They're absolutely beautiful miniatures. They don't realize the scale of the game and the miniatures that's required to play. Yes, there are kind of skirmish aspects of 40K. Yes, you can play smaller games, but it's not set up for that. It's set up for big battles. It's set up for, for you to regularly collect miniatures and add to your collection but not from the perspective of a little bit at a time. This is kind of where also friends of mine are like, wait, really? That's nuts. You have your army, and over time you add units. This is true of any system, X-Wing miniatures, Battletech, right? I'm buying new stuff. You're buying new stuff. The stuff that you have doesn't become obsolete. With Games Workshop, the stuff that you have regularly becomes obsolete as they interject new stuff. So it's not a question of I want to get constantly get new stuff to try out new combos and and expand my army. It's just to play this game. I have to buy new stuff to the point where some units are so neglected. I mean, you can play them, but you're not going to have an even remotely optimal experience. And that is also by design. 
So it, it's not so much in my mind a question of how expensive Games Workshop is. Certainly it is, but this is a hobby. This is a very specialized thing um, compared to board games, compared to other cross-section hobbies. I'd say it's about equal, but the difference is when I go all in for that board game, if it's five, $600 to invest, I'm set, I'm stock, I'm done. Games Workshop, there's the churn. They're burning you, you're buying more and more, and that's where things get to inflate when you get to the size of the game and you get to the fact that you're regularly updating. That's what makes it hard with the price of the models and navigating that. And yes, certainly you could play. I think Games Workshop has noticed this in the current edition more than ever where their skirmish games are not necessarily to promote you and buy you and graduate you to full-scale 40K. I mean, certainly that is part of the design feature to do that. And for many, that is a gateway in. But the point is even I think they're realizing we can't continue to command these insane army prices and these insane expectations because it's not sustainable and there are other pressures. Now, how they get around that, of course, is just in lower the scale and scope, but increase the frequency. So lower it down to skirmish, support it where armies are small, but release seasons, release boxes, release updates so fast that you have to acquire them or they're gone. Or the churn of your army, even from a skirmish-based game, if you accelerate that, it almost becomes as much as a full-scale war game. And when you get into Warhammer, and I wouldn't play Warhammer any other way, it's one-to-one scale. My land raider... My knight represents one land raider, one knight. It's not like I've got five little Romans on a stand and that represents that element of my army. No, since everything's one-to-one, you're paying one-to-one. So it's a different scope. And are the prices unreasonable? I won't say they're unreasonable, but I will say I think they are unsustainable. And the only way GW is sustaining that right now is FOMO, Get in, get this release right now, because if you don't, it's gone, but also by constantly pulling in. And they've always done this, and they've always been able to do it. Veterans are like shrugging their shoulders. They're like, I don't know how GW does it. They burn the community. They burn the older players, and they're constantly replacing it with new players, new players, new players. But is that really growing Warhammer, or is it just swapping one for one and maintaining it? I don't know. They they seem to be able to do it. But are the prices unrealistic? Are the prices unattainable? I think the price for what it is is reasonable, but the scale and the scope of what they expect you to buy to be able to play their version of Warhammer, that makes it very, very, very hard to keep up. And that's where we see 3D printing stepping in more and more. That's where we see sculpts and alternative models or players and not just old players that are like, I play this way 40K, I'm never going to change. Even new players downgrading to play more skirmish or smaller battle type games over more traditional Warhammer. 